everybody i'm back today to do another video for you all about art and we're going to be focusing again on the artist edward tinga tinga we know all about him we know about his paintings we know about what he used to draw we know about what kind of patterns he used and we know about the sort of bright colors he used as well Today, we're going to have a go of practicing some of the techniques that he actually used in his painting. So we're going to be practicing using some different types of pattern with dots and lines. And we're going to be having a go of creating some different tones of the same color, which means from going from light to dark, but using the same color. I'm just gonna be using pencil crayons in the video today. However, if you want to use some paint, then you can do that. You'll just need one color and you'll need some white as well and maybe a black we're also going to need a normal pencil and some paper okay and that's if you don't have access to a printer if you do then you can print the art challenge for this week and work on there it's up to you okay hopefully you can see my paper and you can see my hand and what i'm going to be doing so i'm just starting off with a pencil and i'm going to be trying to imitate which means to copy the patterns that I've uploaded onto Seesaw. Now I'm not going to do all of them. You can spend your time doing those at home. I'm just going to show you how it will look maybe on a piece of paper. It doesn't need to be hugely neat. So I'm going to start off by doing this sort of circle, semi-circle pattern to fill in a space that I might have on my work. Okay. And I'm just going to do that a few times and think about whether I think it's an effective pattern or not. I quite like it and I, I like the way it looks like scales. So if I was using an animal that's scaly, that might be a pattern that I would want to use. Okay, hopefully you can see that. The next pattern I'm going to do is one that's literally just lines, but they're going in different directions. So I've got four lines going this way. And then four lines going this way. And I've got another four lines going this way. So I'm literally just practicing and having a go of these different patterns and they're kind of done in, in the opposite way. And you need to think about which ones are your favorite. What do you like for filling in the, the space that you're going to be creating? The next one I'm going to do is just some hatching, which is basically just lines going in one direction. Edward Tinga Tinga definitely used quite a lot of this. Okay, and that would be quite effective for just filling in a space. And the next one I'm going to use, I'm going to try this one, which is called cross hatching. So it starts off just like hatching and then I'm going to go over it the opposite way and it creates little squares. You need to think about how close they are together. Mine aren't all the same. So I need to think about whether I would want them to all be the same for it to look the most effective. Okay, and now I'm gonna have a go of some dots as well. Just doing some different size dots. If you want to practice some of your own patterns, you can, that you've spotted in Edward Tinga Tinga's work. You don't just have to use the ones that I've put onto Seesaw. It's just an example for you. I quite like this one, the way the dots are all quite close together at the top and they're becoming more and more spread out. Might do some more, even closer together. Okay, quite happy with that. Um, and I'm just going to practice some zigzag patterns as well. Starting off quite close again. And then getting further apart. Now you can see that my work is quite close together. It's probably not the neatest, but it doesn't matter. It's all about just testing out your favorite technique. So I'm now gonna think about which technique I really liked for filling in space. And I did like using the dots. I also like the hatching and cross hatching, but I really like this effect as well. And I think this one would be good for doing an animal with scales. So 
Now I've done that, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to get my pencil crayon. Okay, I've just had to turn my work around so that you can still see it because it wasn't fitting on the screen very well. But now I've got one pencil crayon. It's not a special type of crayon. It's just a normal pencil crayon and it's a purple one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and create four different shades or tones with the same colour. So for the first one, I'm going to press quite hard and I'm going to just fill in quite a small space with this but pressing as hard as I can to create the brightest, the most vibrant and the darkest shade and the darkest tone that I can with this colour. Okay, now if you were doing this with paint you might want to add a tiny bit of black to the colour that you're using and just show me one example of that colour in its darkest possible form. Never add too much black otherwise it will just completely turn black. Okay, so for my next one, I now need to think about how I can make a slightly lighter tone. So I need to think about the pressure that I'm applying. So I'm still going to press quite hard, but I'm definitely not pressing as hard as I did the first time. And you can see that this creates a lighter tone of the same colour. Okay, so I'm using less pressure. Okay, so that's that one. I'm now going to do my next one and I'm going to do this four times each time getting lighter so we're going from darkest to lightest so I'm going to have to press even lighter this time now again if you're using paint you might just want to use the colour and add some white to it to make it lighter each time okay you can also do this with crayons just the same as I've been doing pressing harder pressing lighter pressing lighter pressing lighter each time okay so I'm going to press quite a bit lighter this time Okay, and you can see hopefully the difference between these tones. You can see how I'm creating four different tones with the exact same colour. And my last one I'm going to have to press super light. So actually so light that you can hardly even see it. So if I was using paint I would have to add quite a lot of white paint to this one. There we go, you can see I've got darkest to lightest. Now, which one do you think matches the artwork of Edward Tinger Tinger the most? I think this one, because he uses very vibrant and bright colours. So that's something to think about. When I'm doing my work, if I'm using pencil crayons, I need to think about using quite bright, vibrant tones and I need to press quite hard with my pencils and that will give me that bright and vibrant colour. What I'd like you to do now is go away and have a go of creating some of those different patterns and some of those different tones and have a think for yourself about which style you're going to be using the most when you do your artwork next week. Think about what kind of pressure you're going to need to use with your pencil like I have. Think about what's your favourite pattern to fill in different spaces. Okay, and I'd love to see the work uploaded onto Seesaw. You can just do it on a plain piece of paper or you can do it on the sheet if you do have access to a printer. I look forward to seeing your work and I'll see you again next week.